Today we got our first look at the Lord of the Rings set and we've got some insane stuff to cover. One piece in particular that is just kind of mind blowing. We know it was an inevitability, but it is here now and it's gonna be insane to see how it plays out. Let's take a look at these cards. We'll start with Frodo, our main character, Sauron's Bane, a one white halfling citizen for one two. You can pay two hybrid, either black or white, to have it turn into a halfling scout with base power and toughness, two three and lifelink. Or you can pay three black to turn it into a halfling rogue. It says whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. If the ring has tempted you four or more times this game, otherwise, the ring tempts you. So it looks like some kind of kind of poison countery here, but you only get four temptations or you lose the game, according to Frodo's card. We don't know really what the tempt mechanic 100% is going to look like. We didn't get that revealed today. That'll be in the uh, May 30th debut stream, which will be live for. Make sure you're subscribed. So it is interesting to see the phrase lose the game on a card that is one white mana. That means that it could have some pretty significant playability, especially if Temptation gets some support. Some good cards, some instants or sorceries that, you know, have an effect, but then it also says the ring tempts you. I think that could be the kind of support that it needs for a card like this to see a lot of play. We also saw Samwise, the Stout Hearted. Now you'll see the rarity symbol there. This is an uncommon. They told us on the stream today, and we kind of knew this already from the IGN article that we reviewed yesterday, that a lot of the main characters in this set, some of the main characters in the set, we should say, are going to have different rarity versions, just like Brothers War, where we got an uncommon Urza, a rare, a mythic. We're going to have the exact same kind of thing happening in Lord of the Rings, because they really want to highlight all the different parts of the story and not just one character at one time in their journey, because, you know, these characters change a lot. Samwise the Stout Hearted is one white, one other for a 2-1 halfling peasant. It's got flash, and it says when it ETBs, choose up to one target permanent card, nice, in your graveyard, that was put there from the battlefield this turn, return it to your hand, then the ring tempts you. So we need to know more about the mechanic, temptation, ring tempting, to really analyze this card fully, but some recursion, some, you know, longevity on a white card, returning things that were destroyed at instant speed, very cool, and I like that, especially at Uncommon. We also got our Uncommon version of Gollum, Patient Plotter, a black and one for a 3-1 halfling horror. When it leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you, and you can pay one black, sack a creature to return it from your graveyard to your hand at sorcery speed. So, a lot of times, creatures like this find a home in constructed decks. Will this be good enough to go alongside cards like this that already exist? where it's returning from graveyard to battlefield or graveyard to hand, and is sacking a creature too much to make this playable. I feel like you could create some token creatures and get this card back over and over, but that ring tempting you whenever it leaves the battlefield, that could end up being very, very significant. We saw Mount Doom, some legendary lands represented in this set. Pay one life, add a black or a red for tapping it. You can pay three, one and black and red, tap it, deals one damage to each opponent, or you can pay five, a black and red, tap it, sacrifice it, and a legendary artifact to choose up to two creatures, then destroy the rest, only at sorcery speed. So it's pretty sweet having a board wipe on a legendary land for your commander decks. I have a Dahada legendary reanimator commander deck, came out last year and I sort of made it my own. Mount Doom automatically goes into that because I can recur what gets destroyed and I'm going to have legendary cards in that deck already because Dahada doesn't just care about legendary creatures but legendary lands, spells, artifacts. So Mount Doom automatically goes into that. Do you have any decks that are going to run Mount Doom? I'm kind of interested to see if anybody's already thinking about putting this in one or more of their commander decks. We also saw the Shire along that legendary land line. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. So, Commander, this could be relevant. Pay one green, one other, tap an untapped creature you control, and you create a food token. So any deck that cares about tokens or specifically food tokens is going to love this card. You know, Guillaume decks are automatically running this, I'm pretty sure. That just goes in there. We saw some sweet 
instant spells you cannot pass and look before anybody in the comments says that's supposed to be you shall not pass well that was ian mckellen that was the script of the movies apparently in the books and i didn't know this when i saw this card i was like come on why is it weird in the books gandalf says you cannot pass multiple times not you shall not pass you know they really wanted that triumph of the moment for ian mckellen to yell you shall not pass and not cannot i don't know instant speed destroy target creature that blocked or was blocked by a legendary creature this turn we are going to get so many legends in this set and probably a lot of legendary support like this card that any legends matters decks are automatically going to get better from this set just bar none you know it's going to be at the end of the stream blake was answering questions and he was talking about how it's very difficult for him to name any little tiny character even in lord of the rings that doesn't have a card in this set so you cannot pass seems very good destroy target creature that blocked or was blocked by a legendary creature this turn you can do this before combat damage goes through one mana instant speed destruction love this in the right deck we saw another instant that is kind of controversial some people are like oh yeah this is definitely going to be played in modern and some people are like this is worse. This is remand's not played. Why are we going to re re play reprieve? One white, one other for an instant speed. Return target spell to its owner's hand and it replaces itself. So it says lets you draw a card. I think that this is going to at least get tested in modern for sure. But I think that this has got playability in constructed formats. And I think that decks that don't have access to counter spells are going to want to run this in commander. Now, late game in commander, this gets worse because you return the spell to their owner's hand, you draw a card, they just recast it, right? But it could get you around a board wipe that they're tapping out for, you know, give you another turn with all your stuff, give you a way to make those indestructible, hopefully, before you pass the turn back to them. Reprieve is interesting, and I want to see how that one goes moving forward. So let's talk about some very, very good commander cards. Tom Bombadil, five color legendary god bard, 4-4. Four, four. It's a saga deck. We've got a commander for sagas now. As long as there are four or more lore counters among sagas you control, Tom Bombadil has hexproof and indestructible. Also says whenever the final chapter ability of a saga you control resolves, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a saga card. Put that card onto the battlefield, the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order, and it only triggers once per turn. But still, this is going to help you keep sagas on the battlefield. Specifically, this is going to have to be the commander of a saga deck. It's not going to see play otherwise. But for those types of players that want that type of deck, you've got a commander now. And it's five colors, so you can run all of the sagas throughout any format, any set ever. You'll be able to put it in the 99 of Tom Bombadil. That card was from the regular set. This card is from the commander set. We didn't see the face commanders really today because the stream blake was telling us that there's a lot of mechanics on there that they're not going to show off yet so we don't want those mechanics getting spoiled early so we're not going to show you the face commanders however they did show us radagast wizard of wilds a blue a green and two other for a three five avatar wizard it's got ward one it gives all beasts and birds you control ward one and it says whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater choose to either create a three three beast or a two two bird with flying I like this card. Four mana, really good casting cost. In green, you're going to be able to recast it multiple times. And it's going to give you sort of a tribe leader for two tribes, beasts and birds, that don't have a ton of commander legendary support. So it's nice to have a commander for that type of deck. We also saw Sam, Loyal Attendant, one half of the partnership with Frodo, that are, I think, going to be the face commanders of the Frodo and Sam commander deck. Sam is one white, one green, one other for a 2-4 halfling peasant. Partners with Frodo, adventurous hobbit. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you create a food token and activated abilities of foods you control cost one less to activate. So really, really good in token decks. If you just only care about generically creating tokens, that's what you need to get your value engine running. Sam is going to provide you a food at the beginning of combat on your turn every turn. It's pretty great. We'll see how it partners with Frodo Adventurous Hobbit. Hopefully, you know, there's some kind of sacrifice of food, goad something, something like that. I could see that being a, a potential way to use these food tokens, but we know that there will be some way, some really synergistic way to use food tokens. So let's get into the super collectible part of this now. We're past the commander part. Let's get into the collectible part. Serialized soul rings. What you're looking at right here is from the commander 
set. These are only available in collector boosters. These will not be legal in modern. They are numbered, serialized soul rings that represent the story, Sauron giving rings to elves, three to elves, so 300, seven to dwarves, so 700, and then nine to humans, so we get 900 human soul rings. They're written in Elvish. That is the Elvish language there. I can't remember what it's called. Somebody in the comments let me know what that's called. Already forgot. But serialized, popping up again. One of 300 for the elven one. One of 700 for the dwarven one. And then one of 900 for the humans one. What do you think of these? I am of the opinion, and this is just my opinion, that serialized needs to take a step back and slow down a little bit because it's not going to be special. If every set, even if once a year, obviously if every set has serialized cards, it's gonna be a problem. But even one set a year, in my opinion, is too much. We've got to slow down on these. They're cool collector's items, but they're not gonna have any value and they're not gonna be as fun to hunt for if one set a year, two sets a year are showing us serialized cards. Now, wait till the end. There's a little bit more to talk about with Serialized, but I want to look at box toppers real fast. Valley of Gorgoroth is a wasteland. We've got some reprints of some cool cards that need reprints, not going to be modern legal, but are going to get reprinted with that, what I've been calling the Godzilla treatment. You see the actual name of the card is, over, is under the title of the card. So it's a reskin of Wasteland as the Valley of Gorgoroth, which is pretty cool. Nice little reprint there with Wasteland. We also saw a reprint of Ensnaring Bridge. It's a needed reprint, it gets played occasionally. You know, the Ensnaring Bridge in my binder that I've been meaning to sell is crying right now, but the Bridge of Khazad-dûm where we see the Balrog and Gandalf face off is now Ensnaring Bridge. Nice little reprint of Ensnaring Bridge, we'll take that. And these are box toppers, remember. And then the most relevant one, in my opinion, the reprint of Great Hinge as the party tree. I'm a big fan of this one because the party tree is already a pretty good <laughs> nickname for Great Hinge. And now it's actually called that. So this is definitely the one that is the most exciting, in my opinion. The party tree reprint of Great Hinge is a Great Hinge is a card that we need a reprint of. Very, very played card. And so now having the party tree, this is probably going to be my preferred version of it, but hopefully we get enough box hoppers injected into the marketplace that lowers the cost of the Great Hinge overall. We shall see. And then we have the big one. This is the biggest news of the entire stream. We knew this was going to happen. It was coming. What you're looking at right here is a one of one, the one ring. This is huge. This card is going to be five figures. This card may be six figures one day? More than a Black Lotus? I don't know. It will be rarer than Black Lotus. That alone, you know, is going to be driving the price. It's got the special language text there. I think this is the Sauron language and not Elvish. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what language this is. I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings, like, lore master. I liked the movies. That's about as far as it goes. For me, they were cool movies. But one of one on the one ring. This is the literal one ring. This is crazy. This is absolutely mind-blowing. We know it was going here. We knew that we were headed in this direction. It's crazy to me that we got a one of one before we got like a set of five, a one of five, a two of five, you know, something like that. It's very common in the sports card world to have cards that are, you know, one of 10, one of five in existence. But we jumped right to one of one. That means that they are prepping us. They're just going to be like, let's rip the bandaid. We are definitely going to have hyper rare, super low print run cards in collector boosters going forward. One of five, one of 10. And then the step after that is going to be some sort of inclusion of a real thing, a real world piece on a card. I don't know how they're gonna do this with Magic the Gathering, so I don't know if it's ever gonna pop up. But in the sports card world, again, you can get cards with pieces of gameplay jerseys on the card. You can get pieces, you know, like dirt from a field from a World Series game or whatever. 
if you're collecting baseball cards. And so the hyper rarity cards do exist in other worlds are going to filter into this world, Magic the Gathering, I mean. And this is our very first venture into this. We've seen Serialized a few times now. Serialized has called, sort of lost its luster at this point, especially with out of 900 for the human one. Seems like a lot. Out of 900 doesn't seem super special. But one of one? This is absolutely ridiculous. I need you to go down in the comments and tell me what you think the price of this card is going to be the very first time it shows up. And... I need you to tell me if you think this card's just going to like never be found. One of one is crazy. They said it can be in the collector boosters and gift bundles as well, not just collector booster boxes. So who knows where this is going to pop up? Who knows where it's going? You know, who's going to get it? I think it'd be hilarious if Rudy opens this and he's like, all right, and this is a ring. I can't read it. Nice. I'm just kidding. He'll know that it's a one of one. Everybody's going to know that the one of one is a chase card. That's the Lord of the Rings previews that we got in the first look today. Like and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with MTG News or see any of the other content that we put out. Check us on Wednesday nights to be live every Wednesday around 9 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. We can hang out, discuss some of this stuff. Other than that, I'm tapped out. Catch you later. highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat.